Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the St. Michael Spiritual Hour, where we believe in a positive spiritual attitude for positive spiritual attainment. This show is sponsored by St. Michael Spiritual Church, P.O. Box 578, Crete, Illinois, 60417. Go to drmichaelochapman.com for more information or call us at 708-752-0895, 708-752-0895. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or X now, uh, YouTube, and Vimeo, at Dr. Michael O. God bless you. The purpose of this program is to lift people up as we lift up the name of Jesus. We want to share positive energy and stories with you to help you think, meditate, and spiritually make it. This is your hour. Thank you for joining me on today. It is, let's see, it's midnight uh, on a Wednesday. Yeah, it's midnight on Wednesday. So when is the when is the show recorded? Live. It's midnight on Wednesday. So get up. Thank you for joining me on today. I appreciate your uh confidence in the show and help and positive energy that you send us every week. Bless you really, really good. We send you nothing but positive energy. We believe that the glass is half full. It is not half, half empty. empty. Half empty. So uh, be encouraged on today. Whatever you're going through, God can and will do what he says he will do. He will help you. And there's no uh, 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 difference in person. God is just there for you. All right. Waiting for you to do what. He, you ask him to do. Now, you got to live right. Sure, you got to live right. You try to live right. Well, I'm not living right. Well, make an effort. Make an effort to do better. <coughs> Excuse me. Make an effort to do better. So you can start living right, doing right, and God can answer your prayers. Now, here's the thing. He's so good. He just answers them anyway. But what is what is uh, is it for you on the back end? What do you have to do? Tell somebody and help somebody. So don't take his love, his his uh, the miracles for granted. We're gonna talk a little bit about that, where that's found and how God honors your testimony. And I know you you've been through some things, but He has delivered you from some things too, and you have a testimony of your own. So what am I supposed to do with that testimony? You're supposed to tell somebody about it. Well, they won't believe me, even if the um. You think they won't believe you. You're supposed to tell them anyway. All right. Deliver your message. Deliver your testimony so God can help those that don't believe, that need that little extra push. And we're here for you tonight, right now, to give you that extra, little extra push to, to see you through. God bless again. God bless again. God keep you wherever you are in the world. So, you know, we pray for those who are in, in the, um, in Europe. We pray for those who are, it, in, in the service, we pray for those who are in Iraq, Iran. We pray for those in New York, uh, all over uh, South America, uh, Canada, wherever you are. We're praying for you that God comes in and gives you peace and gives you the answers that you need to go forward. All right. Some of those, some of those are stuck. Some of those that just graduated don't know what they're going to do next. We ask, Lord, Give them the encouragement that they need. Give the parents the encouragement that they have the right decision to make for their children. That's our prayer for them. God bless and God keep us with you again is our prayer. Exercise, exercise, exercise. 15 minutes every day. Walking is the best. Well, actually, swimming is the best. We'll take walking. Um, exercise every day. Get in the pool. If you If you near a pool. Uh, go in and get the exercise going, move around in the pool. You don't have to swim. You can walk, jog, get that movie 15 minutes a day, uh, three, three or four times a week. We, we're encouraging you to do that so you can live a very, very long time. We know, you know, we know ministers that are 96, 104, right? And Danny's mother's 100, she's a hunt free 103. So, there are people who are who are living longer, so I want you to be in that number. Get off the bed, get off the couch, get off the floor, start moving around, walk to the mailbox, walk around the block, walk around the yard, walk in the yard, go see your neighbor, check on them, uh, go to the library, it's cold and cool in the library, go to the library, pull out a book, pull out a magazine, volunteer. Uh, go to a nursing home, volunteer, 
uh, to help those that need help right there. Uh, go where, I think that was a minister's group that went to uh, the jail. Did I tell you that story? Talking to my wife now, brother. Hey, my wife, speaking to my wife, we've been married 20 years. This is our anniversary. Woo! Happy anniversary for us on today. Bless you real good. And thank you, uh, wife, for being with me for 20 years. Amen. Amen. All right. So, so it's, when I was working at the jail, I'm going to tell you some more stories about working at the jail. I was working at the jail in uh, Kankakee. And there was a, there was a, a female... You know, there were no males in the group. It was a female group. And they would come in every week because I was working there every... Was I working every day? Felt like it. Uh, but I was working with them. When I would come, when I was leaving, no, when I was coming, they were leaving. So uh, we would talk uh, briefly in the in the uh, lobby and in the parking lot, you know, how things are going. And they were volunteering, not getting paid, but they were volunteering to speak to the uh, inmates, the female inmates in the jail. And uh, they were so dedicated that nothing could really stop them. But what was good about it to me was that they volunteered. Nobody's making them one working. But the deposit that they left with the ladies would help them uh, grow and do better. So for you, if you say, when well, I'm retired, I don't want to work anymore. God has allowed you to retire. Or if you say, I'm between jobs and I don't know what to do next. There's always volunteers you can go. And it wasn't hot. It was cool in there. And they'd listen. Uh, it's not, wasn't dangerous. They would listen because some of the people, and they want the word. They want to be encouraged. So that might be somebody that you know, somebody that you uh uh, uh, know or a friend or heard about that's incarcerated that need the word. Okay, so then it's a good time to go in and volunteer. Alex Blackwell, God bless and God keep you and strengthen you is my prayer for you on tonight or this morning. God bless and God keep you up here for you're up for a reason and we continue to encourage you and all that you uh, have and stop being uh, what do I want to say with you? Uh, uh, stop being uh, undecisive, be decisive, stick to your guns and stay with it on today. God bless and God keep you real good. So, uh, uh, whatever you try to do, do some exercise. Now you got to get up, you got to stop eating, you got to start eating right. What does that mean? Less red meat, uh, more fruits, more vegetables. Yeah. And, and uh, drink plenty and plenty of water. Plenty, of, that's everybody, plenty and plenty of water. Can you exercise? Yes, you can. You can ride that bike. You can blow the dust off of that treadmill in the, in the basement uh, or in the corner that you like so much. You can get that out and you can start going through. You can start saying, well, I need to do this 10 or 15 minutes a day. Put my favorite music on and go for it and go for it and go for it and go for it because I want to live I don't want to die. I want to live a long, long time. And God will do that just for you. Okay. But you have to put some, uh, you have to put some uh, effort in. Okay. That's all we, that's all we expect. Effort. So if you got your high, hypertension, you know, that's something, uh, push back on the salt, push back on the salt, get a salt substitute. Uh, Mari, God bless and God keep you, Mari Kojic. Thank you for joining me on today. I'm praying for your brother, Mari, uh, that he has a smooth and quick recovery. Amen, amen, and that, and that he jumps back in, but with uh, expert training is our prayer for him on today. So we lift him up in prayer on tonight. So keep your diabetes in check. Keep your hypertension in check. No high salt can, you know, you can drink. You, there are chips that come unsalted. Did you know that? There are chips that come unsalted. Those are the ones you need to be kind of going to if you're addicted to salt and you addicted to those chips. Amen. Thank you. Welcome. And you need to be uh, addicted. To, well, I say I'm addicted to that. I need to get this, the chips with uh, least amount of salt. Go to when you order your fries. You can tell them no salt on the fries. You can tell them that too. On your uh, chicken, you can say no lemon pepper. You can go to that salt. You know that salt and that lemon pepper. So you can say no, I don't want that either. So you can kind of condition yourself to get that blood pressure down. Okay. So a diabetes check. Go to the diet doctor. Go to your provider. And say hey, uh uh, no no no. I need you to check me out. Uh. 
I'm scheduled for my yearly appointment. I'm going to take, I'm going to have it tomorrow. That's what you got to say. And then sit there and, and have all your questions wrote down. Where's my book? Is it up here? My doctor's book. Anyway, I have a book that's online at, at uh, lulu.com or amazon.com. And you go and you speak the, the uh, I'll, I'll get, my wife is getting to get it right, getting it right now. Because you can get this book. That way you can keep all your questions that you have for the doctors right there with you. Get your lab tests. You can write those down to your A1s, my A1C result. I need that. Put it down and then uh, check your kidneys. Yes, checking the kidneys test. You got to have that because if you're drinking and all that other stuff, you know, your, your kidneys uh, are taking a beating. So you need the kidneys. Your eye exam, if you're not seeing things right, some are blur, all that's happening to you, then you can say, hey, uh, I need my eyes checked and your feet. The least problems. Now you got to have your feet checked because that's what you're riding. That's what you're walking on. Okay, so you got to have that. Gabriel Chapman is watching. God bless you, Gabriel. Uh, so uh, you got to have your feet checked. They look funny. You hurt. Uh, any, anything that's out of the ordinary, have them checked out. So those things you need to do. Keep listen. Well, I'm too. I'm, nothing's happening to me right now. We're talking about prevention. Good morning, Pastor Lucretia L. Smith the second, Pastor Little of the Valley. I'm giving her all the titles right now, and uh, she's president of the Progressive Center in Chicago. Blessing God, keep you th and thank you for joining me on this morning. So this is the book I want you to get. Medical. It's probably reversed if I show it right now, right? It is. Go to drmichaelchapman.com. Go to lulu.com. It's called My Medical Record Book. Get this book. If you, if you, you know, if you, if you email me or direct message, message me or call, uh, 7087520895, I will send this book to you for, uh, how much does it cost? You know, $15. I will send it to you for $10. I will, I will discount it. But, uh, I want you to get this record book so you can keep it. For yourself, when you go to the doctor, you will have a record of your own. Well, they printed out already. That's good. But nothing like having a hard copy. Okay, so you can go back to Because things get lost on the internet. Things get lost on your phone. Things get lost on your tablets, computer. All those things. But when you have your record book, my medical record book, Dr. Michael Chapman, you can have this for yourself. Okay? All right. God bless the guy. Keep it. You got to keep, keep that high blood pressure down. You got to go back to the doctor. If your medication is uh, messing with you, that's black, isn't it? If your, if your medication is messing with you, it's not normal. Things are happening to you. Uh, blurred vision, uh, dizziness, uh, heart palpitations, all those things, losing weight, gaining weight. Then go back to the doctor. Go back to your provider and say, I need another checkup. The medication I'm, I'm, you've given me is not working for me. That's nothing but self uh, 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 care. That's all that is. I need you to do that on today. God bless and God keep you. This is my prayer for you. And all that you do, put God first and he will deliver on today. Uh, how do you know that? Well, you connect with the I am. I am positive. I am grateful. I am love. I am beautiful. I am handsome. I am healed. How about that? I am courageous. I am a miracle. I am a believer. I know you're saying that with me right now. I am sane. I am uh, intelligent. You're saying that right now. I hear you. And I am spirit. I am fearless. I am productive. I am ready. I am confident. I am powerful. I am strong. I am free. I am great. When you start putting the I am, which is the source, God. But I am the Lord thy God. That's what it says. And that divided the sea whose waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Isaiah 51 and 15. And I don't know if you share this. You can share this with, you know, on Facebook, Twitter, wherever you do. I don't mind. I said, well, I don't want to copy it, copy it, do what you need to do. But I need you to say it. For I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. That's ex Exodus 15 and 26. 20, 26. Continue to embrace and say what you want God to do for you. Connect with the master. I am the test. I am the job. Oh, I am the leader. 
I am the Father. I am great. I am that I am. I am, therefore, I think. You start saying that things start happening to you. I'm afraid to take the test. You are the test. I'm afraid to take the application. You are the application. Go forward. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to take the step. Be beyond the step. I am above the step. I am confident. Boy, when you start saying stuff like that, things change in your favor. You have to believe, and I'm encouraging you to do that right now, okay? I am encouraging you to stay with it and see how to see how God open doors for you right now. That's a testimony. Your testimony will free you. You, you know, I was saying that the other day. I was on my way, and I was, people were making me mad. I said, no, I am peace. Whew. I am peace. And things just fell over me and said, yeah, you are peace and and let peace abide. Boy, when you start talking like that, you control your environment. You control all that negativity that comes in your eye, in your ear, your face, your eyes, your nose, all your senses. Say, wait a minute, I don't want to hear anything negative on today. When you feel yourself going down that road, you got to tell yourself, hold it. I'm going down the wrong road. This is not good for me today better can you control it yeah if you fall you trip one you got to get back up and say no this day is going to be better for me and don't stop and go back home and get in the bed some of you will stop go back home and get in the bed no i'm pressing forward and i'm moving forward because god has my day in his hand i am successful i am courageous i am wealthy i am a a, a child of the master Boy, when you start saying that, all positive now, nothing negative, things happen for your benefit. Then tell somebody about it. We're going to talk about that on today. What good is a healing if you don't tell anybody about it? Okay, what good is it? All right, he delivers you from some stuff. He's uh, uh, not just physical healing, spiritual healing, stuff that you ask for. God just does it anyway. Nettie Robinson, God bless and God keep you, Nettie. Oh, bless and keep you and strengthen you is my prayer for you, sister. Bless you real, real good. So you, if anybody knows about getting back up, I know you do, Nettie. Get back up and things go well for you. Don't give up. Don't give in. And the Lord will bless you on today. So what's next? My wife is my producer on tonight. Who? Prayer before we get too far. We'll be 18 minutes over. I like to stay on schedule. You know, people's got stuff to do. So uh, we're going to go to our prayer. Now, listen, if you have anybody I need to pray for, oh, we need to pray for, then you need to come on in spiritually with me and say, I need you to pray for this person. We're going to pray for that person and get them in your mind who we need to pray for. And it could be a child. It could be, or it could be yourself. Lord, pray for me. (coughs) And we're going to do that for you right now because God is able. And with us, two or three, he will be in the midst. I'm paraphrasing somebody. You know, people are really kind of ticky on that. I'm prayer, paraphrasing that he will be and he will answer your prayers. I believe he will do what he says he's going to do in the now. All right. I ask the grand and seeing healing force to remove all obstructions from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in the need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and power of God. Father, we come to say thank you this morning, this afternoon, this evening mm, for all the blessings that you've given to us already. We, we take nothing for granted. Right now, Father, you've been good. If, if, if we can speak, you know you've been good. If we can hear, you've been good right now. If we can get up, you've been good. And we say thank you, Lord, for keeping us mm, for your purpose and your purpose only. Mm. Now, Father, if we get mixed up, we get a little turned around, Father, please straighten us out. Mm. And bless those that need us right now for inspiration, for healing, for deliverance. We call your name right now. Free them that feel like they can't make it, incarcerated. Feel them that feel like they're bound 
right now by addiction, whatever the addiction may be. Freedom is our prayer. Mm. Heal them. Deliver them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless and God keep it again. Strengthen you wherever you are in the world. You may be, boy, you may be in Guam right now. You may be in China. You may be in Japan. Wherever you are in the world, we send you nothing but love right now. You can and you will make it. Today, today we're going to, oh, what I need to go on my, I almost uh, forgot to go to the uh, prayer list. Boy, you like to be on our prayer list, 708-752-0895. Be on the prayer list on today. I got to get my list out. My wife saying, you're making too much noise. Okay, here we go. Mother Neil, you the first one on the prayer list on today. Blessing God, keep you. Raj, boy, you know, I wonder where, okay. Blessing God, keep you past the Baker Circle of Praise, 96 years young. All right, still pastoring, still knocking people out. God came ministries in, K- no, I'm going to say Carol. God came ministries in Marion, Illinois. Blessing God, keep you in you, Zach Green and Prophetess Mother Green and the Green family. Blessing God, keep you El Shaddai Miracle Temple, Pastor Daisy Williams, Martinez. Blessing God, keep you Betty Cook in Virginia, uh, Brother Williams in Alabama, Norman family down and everywhere, Texas and uh, Mississippi. Blessing God, keep you 103 and free. That's uh, Mother Nellie Norman. Wow, God is good. And she's, man, she's texting. She's doing everything. All right, the Harwell family, uh, Macklin family, uh, Mother Macklin, blessing God, keep you. Don't worry about Mississippi stuff. Boy, it's always something happening. The Queen, Billy Brooks, Austin, blessing God, keep you. Hope to see you soon. Uh, Mr. Billy Brooks, Austin, the Audubon family. I'll talk, and I'll talk about uh, explosion in a minute. See your sins in Kansas City, Missouri. Blessing God, keep and strengthen you. Jesus, the light of the world. That's his thing. Uh, I'm reading my list. Dion, Connie Kerber, uh, praying for your healing. Connie Kerber, Dion, praying for your traveling mercies and your husband. Blessing God, keep your family. It's my prayer. Ooh, wow. Dolores, I had somebody wrote to me. Dolores Mays, blessing God, keep you and strengthen you as well, is my prayer for you. My, uh, the Neal family in, uh, where are they? Uh, California and in, uh, Indianapolis. And in, where's Butter at? Alabama. Alabama, since he did come up in our spirit on today. Uh, blessing God, keep him in Alabama is our prayer. All those in Dam and Aries Porter and family, blessing God, keep you. Uh, Pastor Joyful Judy, blessing God, keep you. River Jordan Ministries, Gerald Scunnies, blessing God, keep you is our prayer for you. And uh, Jer- uh, Jamil Martin, blessing God, I haven't heard from her in a while. It'll be nice to hear from her. Uh, Reverend Norris, blessing God, keep you. Uh, all the Shirley Haythorns, all of the uh, Charlottes, blessing God, keep you. I used to green, blessing God, keep you. Is my prayer for you on today. All right. Like to be on our, oh boy, Pete and uh, Minister Cephas, Minister Tony, uh, all my Arizona, oh, that's the can't keep you. All my Arizona people. Blessing God, keep it in to use my prayer for you. Boy, I'm way over on today. All right, so I'm going to my scripture. If you'd like to be on our prayer list, 708-752-0895. My sister down in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, bless you and your family. I almost said your tribe. Bless you and your family and your tribe. Bless them. And your auntie, I'm auntie Janice. God bless and God, keep you in Chicago. It's my prayer for you on today. All right, and... Uh, I'm going to send a prayer out to uh, all the Lily Valley exes. Well, I shouldn't say exes. Members. Old members. Blessing God keep you. Mr. Ken. Ms. Donna Reed. Blessing God keep you. Nettie, you bringing all these people on. Blessing God keep you and strengthen you is my prayer for you on today. And Nettie, I, boy, your whole family, Nettie, blessing God keep you. And strengthen you is my prayer for you on today. All right, so our scripture for today is 
Hebrews 13. Did you get that? Are you going to read the Hebrews 13? And we'll talk about taking your uh, healing for granted. I know some of you have been healed. I know I have, and I don't take it for granted. I tell people, I was telling people so much. My son's like, oh, here he goes with his story again about being healed from COVID. You know, because I was in, I was on the other side and back in COVID uh, a few years ago, two or three years ago. And that was really uh, an emotional uh, experience for me, yet God brought me through with the healing, and I know it was the master. Of course, when people are praying for you and healing, and you're doing things you need to do, then you step up and do what you need to do to get healed as well. However, it's a it's a story that if he brought me back, he brought me through, then guess what? He can do it for you. He's yet able to heal you from things you thought you could not be healed from when they told me. Now, here's the thing. Everybody in my family had COVID, yet I was the one who had it. Can I say it the worst? What do you, what do you call that? Uh, what, what do you call it at the time? You had it, but you didn't have it. Uh, I'm asking my wife. I think she's trying to figure that out. Anyway, so everybody in my immediate family had it, but I had it the worst. I had to go in. Uh, and they stayed, and they they were delivering like one day, two day. But after I was there for a while in the hospital, and it's like, man, you're thinking, you know, you got to be careful because if you don't, you'll give give in to the negativity. The thing that I can make it will become I won't make it if you're not careful how you think. That's why you got to have positive people around you all the time. You got to have people that believe and pray for you all the time. Do they have to be in your face? No, they have to be in your face, but they got to be praying for you. They got to be saying he's going to make it. He's going to get up. He's going to walk out. You got to have all that. Then they got to come in and not look like you're going to die tomorrow, but look like you're going to make it and get up and get out. So I had all those things working for me. Yet God brought, God sent who he wanted to heal and help me while I was there. So that was all that was a blessing for me. And I'm telling you, I don't take that for granted because look at all the things I would have missed if I had been gone right now. I wouldn't be talking to you right now, not in the flesh, and I wouldn't have, been, wouldn't have made my son's graduation. I wouldn't have seen my granddaughter being born. I wouldn't, none of that would have, I would have experienced. So I don't take that for granted. I tell the Lord, thank you every day for what he has done for me. And every day I don't take it for granted because you don't have to be here on this earth walking around telling people that God is able and God will deliver you. He's not going to come short of his word. Does you don't give up. And then once you uh once you become healed, you tell people there's nothing that God cannot do. He can reach in and pull you out. Yet uh, you should not give up. And I know there were, there were, I told you the story, there were two, uh, entities in the bedroom, in the hospital room with me, sitting in the chairs, waiting for me to pass over and go to the other side. And I just refused to see, to, to have those death angels be, uh, uh, be victorious during those four weeks. I said, oh no, that's not going to happen. Uh, the Lord is going to deliver me, Angie Reed. He's going to deliver me. He's not going to, uh, I'm not going into the hands of the death angels. And they were sitting there minding their own business, just rocking and waiting. I said, no. And I asked, uh, people who were coming into the room, I was, do you, do you see them sitting over there? And they would say, no, I don't see anybody. And I was like, okay. So I didn't argue. But I knew that I was going to be delivered. Yeah, when the Lord delivered me, uh, I said, Lord, thank you for doing what he said he was going to do. So what does that do for you? Now, I know you've been through some stuff worse. Is there anything worse than COVID? I didn't think it was. Um, and people say it. I don't believe it. But I'm going to tell you, I experienced. So uh, there's some stuff worse than COVID. Yet God delivers. He delivers. What's wrong then? What's wrong? You you haven't told people. I'm going to tell you what's going on. You haven't told people your testimony. You are embarrassed. You are um, selfish. You are self-centered. 
and you don't want to tell people how good God has been to you because you don't want people to start thinking that you're weird. But it should be the other way around. If you haven't told anybody about how the goodness of God, then what good are you? What good are your stories? Why should he continue to bring you through and deliver you if you haven't told anybody how good God is and how he can deliver you from the, from death? How he can deliver you when man says you can't make it. How he can deliver you when you are about to give up and everybody's praying for you. He can reach down and pull you out. God can do just that. So if you haven't told anybody, why are you holding on and getting ready to bust? And why are you about to cry? Why are you? Because you haven't told people how good God is. Well, was it the doctors? No. Because they were looking at me. They only came in. Let me, when I had the COVID, they only came in, stuck their head in the door. They were, and they had the suits on that, that astronauts had on. So they were like, uh, we're going to stay here for a few seconds. We're not going to stay here all this time. How you feel, Mr. Chapman? How you feel this day? Michael, how's everything going? And they're out. Okay, so I'm saying it wasn't them. It was God that delivered me. It was not the doctor's. And I have to use a negative, not, but I don't want you to get confused or, or uh, uh, what was I, say? I don't want you to get so scientific that there's an explanation. There was no explanation. Mm -mm. Wait, there's no explanation for that. Except that God did it. He did it. What was the point of that? If everybody else in your family had it, why was it you? the minister, the pastor, the prophet, how is it that you went through? And, and because uh, my faith was challenging, why shouldn't it be? Okay, so I'm, I'm telling you right now, no matter what you go through, God can deliver you. He will deliver you. Now, are we ready for the scripture, Mr. Chapman? Now, now I'm going to read Hebrews, the 13th chapter. 13th chapter, the 15th and 16th verse, because sometimes people take things for granted. Now, what verse do we read? <coughs> <coughs> NIV version. Can you read it a little loud, please? <clears throat> Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name, and do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. All right, all right that's 16. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry. 15 and 16. Okay, so. What does that mean? Well, he's pleased with your praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, uh, for delivering me. I know it was you. Now I'm here for you. I'm here for your purpose, but my purpose is getting clearer. Mm. Not to chase, chase meat, not to chase money, not to chase any of those things, but to tell people who are about to give up that don't give up. God can deliver you. He will. He'll give you the thing that you want. But you have to you have to live right. You gotta say, Well, what's going on with me? There's some things that people will not believe. That's the that's the best stories. People will not believe you almost didn't make it. You almost drowned. You I got in an accident and walked out. God people won't believe it, but how come? Because only God can do those type of things. Only God can do those type of things when I was teaching in the jail. We talked about the jail earlier. But I had the experience of being there. And I was like, I was asking God, why do I have to? This is the thing. Why do I have to teach in the prison? Okay, that was not my idea. It was not in my thinking. It was not what I went out for. But guess what? I found myself uh, teaching in the prison. But I had to experience the fact that some people in the prison felt that they weren't going to get out. They weren't going to make it. That they were doomed. All those things, and I had to experience that because once you feel that uh, those people are doomed, that they're not going to make it, guess what? Then you're saying that God can't deliver them. And I was like, God can deliver anybody, anytime, any place, and anywhere he wants. So what I saw were people who had been shot 10 times and yet still walking around. And I said, well, they need to give God some praise. That's amazing because a lot of people get shot once. And don't make it. So you're getting shot 16, 10, 12 times. And yet still walking around and telling the Lord, thank you. Driving every day drunk. Every day drunk. First thing you do in the morning, go to the liquor store every day. And yet God has saved you. So uh, those are testimonies that I found. People, 
I don't know why I'm here, but I know my mother is praying for me. So then let's pray together. Okay, thank you, Lord. Deliver him or from from what he's thinking about doing. Deliver him uh, from what he's been through. And the Lord delivers. Yet you have to, in your brain, you have to say, I am not coming back to experience this again. Only God delivered me from this case. Only God delivered me from these prison walls. Only God can do those type of things. It was not because I was certainly not because I was so good. That's what you got to say. And because I'm trying to kill somebody else. So no, it wasn't you. It was God who says, no, I got something else for you to do. Tell people how good I am. Tell people how good I can deliver when no one else feels like you can make it. When you're in the grave and God can pull you out. That's the testimony. So then you, your testimony, don't take it for granted. People have been healed three or four times. I heard a testimony this weekend. Of people who have cancer and the Lord, they, it, the, nothing anybody can do because if you had money, you would spend it to get healed. But you don't have that kind of money, maybe. You don't have those kind of connections. Yet, all you have is a connection with the master. So people pray for you. You pray for yourself. And yet, the Lord... Good morning, Donisha. The, uh, the Lord delivers you. He delivers you from that that which seems impossible. So the lady had cancer. The Lord said, you only got six months to live. And, they said, and the preacher went down on his knees and said, no, don't pray. No, no, Lord, please. We want to keep her here. And the Lord says, yes, I'll do that for you. And in six months, they found an experimental, now look at experimental cure that they were working on. And it worked for her. Now, what it what is the purpose of the testimony for all those who have witnessed it? They are to go back and tell people who feel like they are doomed and can't make it, that they can be delivered, that God will deliver them out of that which they feel like man has condemned them to. Uh, but you can't give up. You get your testimony is to help the next person because there's somebody in shoes just like yours saying, hey, I've got it. I'm not going to make it. And you better turn around and tell them, let me tell you my story. Let me tell you what happened to me. And then that delivers them. That changes their whole energy. That changes their whole belief system. And then they always go by this. I haven't been living so good. I don't know why God would do that for me because God has no respect to person. All he wants you to do is tell your testimony once you're through. How he's brought you through and how man had given up on you and how you've done some things that you that are unspeakable. Yet he still saves you on today. So why some people are doing things that, that uh feel like God will not forgive him. But I got news for you. If you repent and believe that he'll do it and never go back and do the same thing again, God will honor that. So in our scripture on the day, he said he honors that praise. That's the praise. Thank you, God, for delivering me. That's all. Thank you, God, for delivering me. Thank you, God, for bringing me out. Thank you, God, for making a way out of no way. Thank you, God, for healing that, that said it couldn't be healed. Thank you, God, for for allowing me to live when people had counted me out, prepared for your funeral. You know you're going out then. When they asking where this this is the question: Did you make a will? Did you keep where are you keeping your money? That's when you know the people are giving up on you. All right. So then you say no. Uh, God has a better idea. He's going to keep me. And there's nobody knows the hour, the time, or the day when the Lord will call you home. Yet. He is always good. It's in your eyes. It's in your beliefs. It's in your heart. Trust him and he will deliver you and say, I'm a, I'm a witness. And that's just one of the stories that I've been through that God can continue to bless you no matter what you do, no matter what you do. But you got to live right now. Come on. You can't go. He's not going to deliver you so you can go out and shoot somebody or kill somebody the next day, cuss them out in the next, in the next aisle, cuss them out in Walmart. He's not going to do that. He's going to do that so you can say, God is good. Let everything that comes out of your mouth be praised on today. God bless and God keep you. Take that with you. And that's Hebrews 13, 
15 and 16. He honors that praise. He honors your testimony. Hey, how do you know it's a good testimony? Because you can barely tell anybody what happened. Uh, don't be afraid. Well, they're not going to believe what I hear. Don't be afraid. Somebody, this is what I've always found out. And it took me a while to find out that somebody, your testimony may reach somebody that needs to be there right there in that minute, in that second. The Lord's going to deliver somebody who hears your testimony right then in that moment because God is that way. He arranges stuff you can't arrange. You can't even beat stuff. like You can't even, you can be the best organizer in the world, but God is the top. He, he makes uh, things come together that you can't even try to make things come together. So he's the best planner. And he does this so people can be saved. God bless and God keep it. This is my prayer for you on today. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So uh, if you'd like to be on our program, every fourth Saturday, 257 West 48th Place in Chicago is our program. Uh, every fourth Saturday, 257 West 48th Place in Chicago at 7 p.m. <coughs> I got to drink some water. <coughs> Drink more water, people. When you feel like you're drinking enough, drink some more. Stay hydrated. Amen. Amen. If you, and if you have a testimony, I want to hear it. I do. You know, testimony how God has brought you through. You look around. <clears throat> how do you know? Look around and say, well, this person's not here anymore. This person's not here anymore. I wonder where this person is. Yet you're still standing. That's a testimony right there. All right. So, uh, Friday, June twenty eighth is our spiritual explosion. Thank, and thank God for thank you for those who are supporting this program. Thank you for your donations. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your well wishes. Wishes we take none of that for granted on today. All right, spiritual explosion twenty twenty four. Uh, dinner with the prophets, the glasses half full, not half empty. Uh, Friday, June 28, 2024, at the North and Mabel Rest, North and Maple. I said Mabel. Did I talk about her tonight? Mabel and Leona, blessing I keep. And I saw Jaquita, 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 blessing I keep and strengthen you is my prayer. For you, make reservations early, don't, uh, donations $75. $65 early bird special before June 20th. <clears throat> June 20th is the last day for early uh, early bird special. Make sure you call 708-752-0895, and say, hey, hold my special early bird ticket. Hold my early bird ticket. The uh, full evening of outstanding spiritual healing and prophecy, Friday, 7 p.m., open introductions, then you sit with the prophet or healer for personal, personal messages, all right, and we got some uh, top people, we got, we have uh, uh, Reverend Ann Gray, a high five prophet, she's fantastic, she's awesome, and then we have uh, Pastor Ernestine Baker, I'm looking at my wife, Ernestine Baker, Circle of Praise, uh, Healing Prophet as well, and uh, Dr. Williams uh, from Holy One of Israel, Outstanding Prophet, and then there's uh, Xavier the Healer. He does those special things uh, that he can heal without touching you. So, uh, yeah, come out and uh, be a part of this program. And plus, the food is good. We ha Should I tell them what we're having? No, I'm not going to tell you what. All right. So, it's a full dinner. Full dinner. And you'll have fun, good food, and relax. You can dress up if you like. Come as you are. If you like, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. All right. We just want you to come and have a, a happy, happy time. Now, if you cannot... If you cannot attend, you may want to uh, sponsor somebody that can uh, attend, and that's good. That's always good to do. All right, but you may want to slip in and say, I need to go and see what God has for me uh, for this coming year. <coughs> <coughs> and we appreciate that. Bless you real good. Four Saturday services coming up. Uh, this is special four Saturday service because we are dedicating uh, new young ministers it's for Saturday, January 22nd, January, well, I mean, January, June 22nd, 7 p.m., Little Valley Spiritual Church, under the center, under the Little Valley Center. 
So that'll be at 7 p.m. Come and as we lay hands, we dedicate these uh, licenses, these new ministers, and we'll be glad to have you there to be a witness of what God can do. You know, we got to raise up a, 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 a nation. You know, we got to kind of pass the uh, uh, baton, the gavel, right? The Bible, the word, because we're not going to be here forever. But we do want, uh, and there are some good people in this world. Now, all, listen, all young people aren't bad. Don't get that in your brain. There are some fantastic young people walking around with good hearts and all they want to do is love somebody and do what they want to do, what God wants them to do once they're told what to do. All right, so there are some good people in the world. Don't be uh, saying all the kids are bad, all the kids are horrible. Uh, that's not true. All right, think about the positive, all right? They need to be uh, led. They need to be uh, 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 spoken in good terms. They need to be taught. All those things. So we're going to honor them and we're going to teach them. We're going to teach them right how to do right and, and, and pat them on the back and tell them that they can encourage them, tell them that they can make it. That's fourth Saturday, 257 West 48th Place in Chicago at 7 p.m. to witness that. All right. Blessing God, keep it and strengthen you is my prayer. If you'd like to know what's going on, go to drmichaelochapman.com. Upcoming events. And no matter where you are, who you are, come out. Uh, we love you. Does not matter uh, race, creed, sex, whatever. Come out and we just love you. All right. God bless and God keep and strengthen you. Thank you for joining me on today. And I'll see you next time.